From high-end design to trend-setting basics, join us as we take a look at the latest in products for your home from the International Home and Houseware Show. That's next on In Life. This program is brought to you in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and through the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Funding for art segments on In Life is provided by the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. Hi, I'm Becky Cramblett. Welcome to this edition of In Life. Today, we're here at McCormick Place in Chicago for the International Home and Houseware Show. The show features thousands of housewares and home products for your house, apartment, or condo. Now this show is not open to the public, but we're going to take you on a tour of some of the unique products that we discovered. More than 60,000 attendees from 40 countries were on hand to meet with the more than 2,000 exhibitors. And for a show that's only three days long, you'll need to load up on carbs as the entire show covers three venues and more than 780,000 square feet. We started with a company based in Springfield, Illinois, Design Ideas, and talked with Joe Kim about some of their newest styles and products. Joe, tell me about the latest in organizational items. Well, the latest is uh, based on new materials, and Design Ideas is a 25-year-old product design firm in Springfield, Illinois. And so for storage and organization, um, we turn to material development, and we're really looking for uh, the functionality of the material and one of the newest things that we have is we're working with EVA and EVA if you don't know is the same type of material that's being used to make flip-flops or the inner soles of tennis okay. shoes. We've all seen that. One of the new products that we've come out with is uh, playing up on the EVA the functionality of it and it's actually for storing jewelry so we have a whole series yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's nice and soft. It's not going to scratch the, the surface of the, of the jewelry itself. And so we have a number of different pieces um, for both rings and necklaces and bracelets and, and, uh, and watches. And great colors. A lot, of fun, colors. A lot of fun colors. We're a, we're a fashion-driven company. So even though we're um, doing storage and organization, which is a very common uh, thing that everyone needs in their home, we're really having a lot of fun with it and turning it into fashion items. Now, it, with this EVA material, it makes for kind of a soft, cushiony sort of container, it, right? It is. It, it, it really is. And it's nice and soft, and again, so it, it really protects the jewelry. But we've also taken it, we've had a number of customers that have come to us, and they said, you know, we love the, the softness of it. It certainly is a safe material for use around the house um, if, in, in use in kids' rooms. But we want it to be a little bit stronger. So we've actually taken the EVA, and we've applied it over a wood box. So this is this has an uh, inner core of MDF. Oh yeah, it's much stronger. Yeah, and so so the the uh, the EVA is applied over that, and we've come out with a series of these different pieces, storage pieces, um, that are much stronger. Gives it a lot of rigidity to the box. So you're giving a lot of thought not only to the functionality of an item, but the style as well. Oh, of course. I mean, and, and style comes into play in terms of the color, but also the shape and the design of the product. So. In addition to the EVA, um, Design Ideas was the innovator of mesh, so metal mesh, which uh, is a very common item these days in, in offices. Um, but we've actually taken the, the mesh and we've created a new pattern. So very common is the diamond pattern in the mesh. And we've actually created several new patterns um, in the mesh to give it a little bit different look. It's a lot more hip and fun. Interesting. And Design Ideas is also concerned about um, being green, which is a, a very popular thing to do these days. Absolutely. Tell me about what you've done in that area. Of course, sure. The, the green movement is, is, is very important. Again, Design Ideas is a material-based company, and so we're always looking to finding items that can be repurposed or recycled. One of the newest pieces that we have are these tote bags. And again, we have a whole series and collection of these tote bags. These are made from recycled plastic grocery sacks, so the same type of grocery sack that we all pick up when we go to the store. Um, these are being made in India, and we're actually paying uh, uh, workers to go around and collect all of the bags. So there's not necessarily a recycling center where the bags are being dropped off. These are being collected um, from stores. They're being collected off the streets of India. And, that, and it, it's very interesting. The bag is awesome. Thank it's you. It's really great. 
It's a great design. Inside. And every, every part of it is made from a plastic grocery bag. That's right? correct, every, every piece of it. And the colors are really fun too because the colors don't have the dyes. These are actually the colors of when the bags are melted down. We end up getting the different colors and then we combine the, the colors to make the bag. That's interesting. Well, you're doing a great job of keeping us up to date on what's new. Well, thanks, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. We've all experienced that moment where we pop the lid on the leftover container in the refrigerator and ask, how long has that been in there? Or what is it? Or even worse, what was it? Now, while they can't help you identify it, Debbie Steven Stouffer has a creative solution for telling you how long it's been in there. Hi, my name is Debbie, and I'm the co-owner of W Products, and we have introduced a new product called the Days Ago Digital Day Counter here at the Chicago Houseware Show. The Days Ago Digital Day Counter is a product that answers the age-old question of how many days ago did I open this jar of food? It's a great application for your pasta sauce, salsa, leftovers that remain a mystery in the refrigerator. And it's also something that can be really useful with baby food and other products. The way that it works is it has a magnet on the back and it just adheres easily to a metal jar lid. It has one button that you push to help trigger the timer to activate starting counting days up. It'll count up to 99 days, so whatever you need to track between zero and 99 days and thinking about three months, it can be really useful around the kitchen, not only for food, but other lifestyle applications. Thinking about how many days ago did you water your plant? How many days ago did you change a water filter? Or how many days ago did you take a vitamin? For the use for babies, it can be very helpful because baby food only lasts two to three days or expressed milk and formula and it can be useful in tracking those two days to know how fresh your food is for a young one. Not only does the product come in a magnet application but it also is available in suction so that can stick to a plastic storage container, glassware, mirrors. So again you can use it throughout the kitchen and perhaps other places like putting it on the mirror in the bathroom to think about how many days ago you applied a beauty facial treatment, took a medication, or other uses around the house. It's great for pets too. How many days ago did you clean the fish tank, change the kitty litter box, or apply pet medication to your dog? So again, the Days Ago Digital Day Counter is something that's great in the kitchen, great throughout the house. It retails for $10 for a pack of two, it can be found at stores like gourmet houseware stores, grocery stores, baby stores, and online at howmanydaysago.com. In the why didn't I think of that category, we found a way to keep your ties from getting wrinkled while traveling. The tie caddy from Pinnacle Ventures is about as simple as it gets. Just roll your tie into the hard plastic case and it's ready to go. And if you're tired of knocking over all the spices in your cabinet looking for the right one for your recipe, Spice Stack might make your life a little easier. As our lifestyles continue to be more and more on the go, we found an inventor who's created a product that indulges that kind of lifestyle. Tim Frank, you are the inventor of Wavebox. Tell I me am. about your product. How did this come to be? Well, the Wavebox was uh, an idea that I had. I spent a lot of time on construction sites, and I would see that construction workers would actually bring full-size microwaves with them to work, take them out, really? and they'd cook it up. So we said, you know what? I think we could make something smaller, lighter, and more portable than that, and that's what started the Wavebox about two years ago. All right. Well, tell me about the benefits and features of this product. Well, the Wavebox is the world's smallest and lightest microwave. It's got this handy handle up top. And it comes with what we call the cool wave, which is a, simply a, a cooler insert. You, wherever you're going, to work or to play, or going out on the boat for the day, you pack what you need into the cooler, mm -hmm. your soups, maybe a couple of drinks, right. and your Tupperware. And then when you get to uh, where you're going to go to eat, you just pop it in to the microwave and fire it up. The unique thing about our product is that no matter where you are, you can, you can power it. You can power it through this AC cord, which is retractable. You can power it through a cigarette lighter in your car or boat, 
or you can power it by hooking it directly to your battery. Now how is the function of the unit um, affected based on how you power it? Sure. Uh, if you plug it into a, a wall outlet or hook it directly to your battery, it cooks just about like a, a standard microwave in the house. If you plug it into the cigarette lighter, because of the wiring in your vehicle, it's a little bit slower, but you can still warm up things like pizza and coffee. Mm -hmm. And you said this was um, the lightest microwave in the world. How much does it weigh? As far as we know, it's 14 pounds when there's nothing in 14 it. 14 pounds. So that's relatively easy for anybody to pick up and throw into their vehicle. Sure. Yeah. It's a bit. It's a. If you can think of it almost like a, an igloo cooler that everybody carries when they go out on the boat or to work, and it's just about that size. And, and the boat is really a popular place for these, becoming a popular place? The boat has been becoming more popular because medium to small size boats don't have any way to cook food. You can just right. clip it right to the battery, which is really convenient, and then you've got hot food and drink right there. Right, and it comes in all kinds of different colors, right? We've got, got some style going on. Blue and red and white and black. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And this will be on the market um, a little bit later? June or July this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And as far as um, features to come, I mean, this is your first model. You're, you'll be making some changes along the line, and yeah, we're looking at a couple different different features. One might be a touch screen door, a single piece door that folds down, maybe a steel casing, uh, just different features that uh, the customers are asking for. Right, but that's this is the only one on the market. This is the only one on the market. Very good. Well, yeah. Tim, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, we'll take a look at a new spin on recycling. But first, a look at some very unique kitchen gadgets. We found some low-tech products that can help keep things clean in the kitchen. Progressive Sifter has a detachable measuring cup. And they also have a mixing cup that doesn't require batteries. And for those times you clean the greens, Spin and Store's unique design lets you drain the water and store your lettuce in one bag. In addition to the whimsical pepper mills from William Bounds, they've also come up with some unique kitchen tools made out of silicone that will make your life easier. First of all, you're making a pie in the kitchen and you don't want that crust to get too brown. We've all taken the aluminum foil and wrapped it around the edge. Well, they've come up with this little silicone cover that just goes on your pie and then it keeps it from browning too much. Very cool. This is to cook chickens in the oven. The chickens can stand straight up and it's supposed to make them cook faster and healthier. Very cool. And this is called a turkey lifter. They, they take the rack, it's a silicone rack, put it in the pan, and then set your turkey lifter in there with a turkey, up to 20 pound turkey, on the lifter. And then when it's done cooking, all you have to do is lift it out. No more trying to struggle to get that turkey onto the cutting board. Even though recycling continues to grow, finding ways to dress up the blue bins has been something of a challenge. This year, however, things seem to be changing with Ecopod. Gary Doffman, creator and CEO, explains. At this year's show, we're exhi exhibiting Ecopod, the modern day recycling system. The Ecopod crushes and compacts all your beverage containers and also provides storage capacity for other recyclable materials. This is how it works. You take a beverage container, you put it down the chute, pop it in, you step on the Eco Crush pedal, you get the nice crush and sound of compaction. You open up the bottle bin and you get up to 50 stored beverage containers in one EcoPod for curbside recycling or to take to a redemption center. The EcoPod changes the way you recycle. Along the lines of recycling, a topic known as sustainability has been getting a lot of attention here at the show. And while most people equate it to being green and see it in products such as these made from bamboo, there's more to the concept that involves how products are designed and manufactured. Industry professional John Paul Coops, who consults companies on sustainability, tells us more. John Paul, tell me, explain to me what sustainability is, first of all. Well, sustainability is really a very complicated concept, but essentially it looks at the three aspects behind a product or a business or a system, and that is the environmental integrity of that product or system, the social equity that's associated with the generation of a product from that system, and the economic viability. Does it work financially? Uh, does it meet the, uh, the bottom line uh, expectations relative to the product itself? Right, and so this issue of sustainability falls on the shoulders of the manufacturers, right? 
It falls on all of our shoulders. Okay. It, it falls on the shoulder of the manu manufacturer to the extent that the manufacturer or the producer of a product, the distributor of a product, have the opportunity to uh, basically put a product in the marketplace that meets those expectations and moves forward toward uh, creating even better and better products from those perspectives, the economic return, the environmental return, as well as the social return of the product. It falls on our shoulders as buyers because as the world becomes more transparent and we learn more about products, we can make informed decisions about what we buy and where what we buy comes from, both in terms of its environment, the environmental impact it has in its manufacture, its, the extraction of the materials in the product, the delivery of the product, and the effect that all of those activities have on the people that are living where the product is being made, the people that are making the product, and the people that are effectively bringing the product to us. So the result of implementing the right practices of sustainability, where does that take us then? Well, hopefully it takes us to a world that's worth living in. Right. Uh, a world where we're not uh, inappropriately reducing resources, we're not uh, making marginal gains uh, in terms of our economic benefit and having very deleterious uh, impacts on the environment or on the people that are associated in any way, shape, or form with the products that we're putting into the marketplace. And are there some specific and simple steps that I can take as a consumer to work in that direction? I think the best step anyone can take is just effectively become more informed about what it is you're buying. Ask questions. There are numerous uh, sources of information, needless to say the websites that a lot of companies uh, put out about their products and their businesses and services. Many of them talk about the efforts they're making to both better the environment and better the societies in which they work and the societies they affect. A uh, good example is the whole fair trade movement where you have companies saying we're not going to take resources from the environment in a way that's damaging the environment of the people that are effectively working for us in that environment, whether it's halfway around the world or your next door neighbor. Those, those people are affected uh, by the work they're doing. Hopefully uh, those companies that are doing fair trade uh, practices are basically paying those people for the work they're doing and they and their environment are benefiting as a result. Uh, it's, fair trade practices include social impacts as well as environmental impacts. Great, John Paul, thank you. Happy to talk. While you probably know Cool Gear for some of their really flashy, fun products like water bottles and glassware, one of the products we found that really caught our attention was something called cereal on the go. The way this works is you unscrew the bottom half, stick it in your freezer overnight. This gel then provides insulation so that in the morning you put your milk in and it keeps it cold for about four or five hours. In the top part of this container, you put your cereal, right? So when you're ready for your cereal and milk, pour the milk in and you pop out this little spoon here and away you go with your cereal on the go. Pretty cool. And of course you can't talk about stuff without talking trends. To get a feel for who's designing for whom, we talked with trend expert Susan Yashinsky. There's so many items out there that are available to the, to the consumer. Yeah, it's a great show, a lot of innovation. I think we really talk about consumer trends and we talk about how they differ by generation. So we have digital from birth, which is our newest generation, zero to 11, and they're all about the interactive home. Furniture that can move on rails, so my bed can be in one place one day and can be in another place another day. It's all about being interactive. The next generation, which is Gen Now, which is a very big generation, 84 million, is really about the custom home. This is the generation that wants to do it with you. They want to know how they can customize the product to their needs and to their designs. It might be digital printing on a product, picking from a portfolio of designs to put on a product. Gen X is really about the entertaining home. You know, this is the generation that wants their home to be a hive and a haven. So it's about product that allows mobility from room to room. It's about being able to entertain in any room of the house because they follow technology and technology is everywhere in the house. Zoomers, we love, we call them Zoomers because they're zooming through life, but it's really the baby boom generation and it's about the luxury home. This is the consumer segment that has the money and can afford to spend on, on luxury products. So it's beautiful materials, it's beautiful um, textures and colors, things that people understand can't be duplicated at mass price points that really understand the artisan quality of the product. And then prime timers, which is our 62 plus generation, where Zoomers are actively going into that age group. It's about aging in place safely with beautiful transgenerational design product, nothing that looks institutional. Interesting, thank you, Susan. Oh, thank you very much.
A touchless trash can is just one of the unique products that we found at iTouchless. A few others that caught our attention is a faucet. Now this is easy to install. All you do is screw it onto the end of your faucet and it becomes a touchless faucet where you run your hand underneath and it triggers the water. Cool. An automatic paper towel dispenser. I wouldn't have thought of this, but it's a great idea. Run your hand over the sensor and it will dispense paper towels. Now, it will work on any paper towels. It'll even set up for half size sheets if you want to do it that way. So it's a great idea. And finally, this is a keyless entry lock. You lift up this little latch here, stick your finger right there. It's programmed for your own personal fingerprint and it will unlock your door. If for some reason you should forget, it also comes with a key so that you can use a key as well. So when they say, don't touch, they mean it. A gadget at the wine enthusiast booth might help you become the connoisseur you've always wanted to be. At this year's show, we're debuting the Wine Master from the Wine Enthusiast. This is the Wine Master 2007. It is fully rated wines from the Wine Enthusiast magazine. You can search by wine type, you can search by wine varietal, you can even pair food and wine. Wine by cheese, wine by food, and organize a wine tasting. The best thing is it fits in your pocket, you can cheat at a restaurant and look up uh, whenever you're going to order off the wine list. You can press your boss. Here if you just see select by cheese, you can go down. Oh, here's by food, berries, and it's going to tell you the best type of sparkling wines to serve with that. It'll give you a rating. Here we go. It'll give you a rating up here, which is the Wine Enthusiast Magazine rating. Selected price, so you know if you're uh, paying the right price. This is 84. It's on a scale from 1 to 100. 90 and above is obviously the best, and 7 is a decent price as well, but it, it ranges in all types of wine. Uh, updatable cartridges. The cartridges can be inserted for when Wine Enthusiast Magazine comes out with their 2008 ratings. It's $39.95 and the cartridges are about $12. Jarden Consumer Solutions has come up with some very unique and innovative products. A couple of them will provide a little bit more home security for you. One of them is called Tundra. Believe it or not, this is a fire extinguisher. So you don't have to look for uh, the, the pin to pull when you're in an emergency, you're trying to figure it out. It's a spray can. Everybody knows how to use a spray can. It's also biodegradable, which means it won't hurt any surfaces in your home and it will, it's useful against all kinds of fires. So that's a great, simple product, a great idea. And in addition, they have something called, this is the First Alert Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Detector. These will, work, it will network with each other so that if you've got a fire that takes place in the bedroom and you're down in the basement, all the smoke detectors will sound so that you know that there's a problem. And then you can grab your fire extinguisher. In addition, Jarden makes some great products that are, are very user friendly for the home and, and very innovative. One of these uh, is the tea machine, and here to tell us about it is Ahsoka. The Zarafina Tea Maker Suite really is the art of tea making for a new generation. For tea connoisseurs who enjoy experimenting with premium loose teas, the Zarafina Tea Maker Suite offers the perfect union of time and temperature to brew the ideal pot of tea. I'll show you how easy it is to use. Simply fill the steeping chamber with water. Right. Put Got your the water premium, in there. premium loose teas in the steep in the uh, brew basket. Mm -hmm. Place the basket in the unit. Next, select your type of tea. What type of tea you have will determine the duration of brewing and the temperature. Next, okay. select if you have loose or bag tea. And finally, select your strength of tea. Do you like your tea strong, mild, or medium? Next, we've just simply flipped the switch, and I'll allow you to, to do oh, that. I and that begins the tea making the switch, cycle. Huh? All right, and this will just do its thing. That huh? will do its thing, correct. All right, great. With that, the small green lights indicate that the tea maker has started brewing. You see the water right. is heating see up. something going on? Mm-hmm. Okay. There is a bimetallic valve in the brew basket, mm -hmm. in the steeping basket, and once that reaches the right temperature, that will release. It will allow the brew basket to drop into the water, and the steeping will begin. That's a great product. Once it reaches the proper time, proper temperature, it will then dis dispense from the brew chamber, the steeping chamber, into the ceramic pot where you can then dispense your tea. Awesome. All right. And then this, this is called the Margaritaville. Right. Tell me about now, this. Now on the this other hand, really fun. we have the Margaritaville Frozen Concoction Maker. And the Frozen Concoction Maker is unique in that it brings restaurant quality drinks effortlessly to the home. Okay. It's a very simple process, three-step process to your own private Margaritaville. Right. First, fill the top ice hopper with ice. Second, we'll fill our blending jar with ingredients. Okay. 
And what is it that you're putting in there? In this case, we are using Margaritaville mix okay. and tequila. All right. Next, place the blending jar back on its base. Uh -huh. And next, if you'll fire up the automatic cycle, oh, I've got good. we'll let it begin. Up, just oh, press it up. up. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. Okay. Now it's on. Now. Sure. Oh, yeah. The unit automatically shaves ice. It knows how much ice to shave. Really? And once it's shaved ice, it begins blending. Awesome. So it knows exactly what to do. It knows how long to shave, how long to blend. Uh huh. This came out then. And when when did these come out on the market? These launched last year new? in the summer of 2006, uh -huh. and will be a big hit for the summer of 2007. All right. A good summertime activity, huh? Cheers. Cheers. And to set the mood while you're enjoying your tasty beverage, these unique wall sconces from Exciting Lighting run on batteries. The LED provides ambiance to any room, which means you don't need to call in an electrician to tear up your wall. And by using removable hooks already on the market, you can move them around the room whenever and wherever you like. That's all we have time for on this edition of In Life. We'd like to thank Anita Peterson for her assistance. For all of us, I'm Becky Cramblett. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, email us at inlife at wsec.tv. This program is brought to you in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and through the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Funding for art segments on In Life is provided by the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. For a copy of the program you've just seen, send $19.95 for VHS or $24.95 for DVD to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and the date the program aired. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.